This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Now then, it's Tuesday, so that means we're doing a top five, but when I was putting this list together, I couldn't narrow it down to five. So I thought, screw it, throw the, throw the rule book out the window, we're doing a top ten. So I've got quite a bit to get through, so I'm going to try and limit myself um, to what we're doing. Basically, today I'm talking about my favourite um, guitar solos, or pieces of instrumental guitar, because there's a couple on this list that you wouldn't say uh, you know, solos, they're just more sort of composed instrumental guitar pieces, one in particular. And, um, yeah, I may have done this video before, I forget, I've done that many videos that I, I really, I can't remember which ones are actually out there and which ones are still, you know, kind of in here. Um, I've certainly done my favourite guitar solos by this player or that artist or from this album or whatever but i'm not sure i've actually done my just a rundown of my list of all time favorite guitar solos there's 10 to get through so i'm going to try and be brief and um i'm going to basically have a little timer here and i'm going to allow myself 60 seconds to tell you about each one starting with apache by the shadows yes indeed apache by the shadows um i'm just keeping an eye on the timer here um this was the first time i ever remember hearing an electric guitar and knowing that that was an electric guitar sound i was really really young probably you know well before i was school age so a toddler and you know i just remember hearing this song coming on the radio and it i was utterly transfixed until this moment music for me was you know the wheels on the bus go round and round or 10 green bottles hanging on the wall i had no idea that music had the power to you know kind of influence your emotions in the way that this piece of music did for me i've been a massive hank marvin fan massive shadows fan ever since and you know if you're looking for the reason why i ended up playing electric guitar then i think we've got uncle hank to blame for that yes yeah. Uh, lay the blame at his door so there you go number one and i've just made it under the wire for the timer johnny be good by chuck berry yeah now i grew up in the 70s and in the 70s 50s rock and roll nostalgia was big business um you know greece was the big movie in the cinemas happy days was the big movie was the big uh, show on tv Certainly the U in the UK, the charts were full of bands like The Darts, Shawaddy Waddy, um, Shanana, Shaking Stevens was, um, you know, kind of on the horizon. All that 50s rock and roll stuff was big news. And, you know, I just remember hearing Johnny Be Good on some um, 50s rock and roll compilation cassette that my parents had got me for my birthday or Christmas or something like that. You know, from, probably on the Music for Pleasure record label, if anyone remembers that, you know, all, all those budget kind of things. And Johnny Be Good was on there and just the, just the guitar tone and everything. It was the first time I thought, yeah, yeah, I, I could probably have a go at doing that and I want to do that. So there we go. There's the timer. Little Wing by Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, no, I didn't really get Jimi Hendrix, to be honest with you. Um, I, just everybody, when you play guitar, when you've started playing guitar, everybody talks about him in these re reverend, hushed tones. And I just, all, all I ever saw on TV was like the, the clip of him smashing a guitar and making a, an unholy racket with it. So I didn't really get it. Then another guitar player, who I'm going to talk about later on in the list, um, they had a version of this song on his uh, on one of his albums and then that made me go and investigate the um you know the uh, the the Jimi hendrix version and i thought okay now i get it and just the the beautiful lyrical um intro part and then the the, the gorgeous lead playing it's just everything really it's just a beautiful i mean you you know little wing it's just a, a masterpiece enough said and i'm currently coming down to the timer here three two one and next Stray Cat Strut by Brian Setzer. Again, that whole 50s rock and roll thing comes into play here. I absolutely adored the Stray Cats. Runaway Boys was their first single, and then Rock This Town. God, I, I probably wore out um, at least one vinyl copy of that 7-inch single. Um, 
and then the, just you're waiting with bated breath for the next uh, for the next tune to come out, and uh, it's this. Comp I was expecting rock, rock this town, Mark Two, uh, out they come with Stray Cat Strut. It was like nothing I'd ever heard, and there's there's these kind of weird, spooky sounding chords jazz chords you know augmenteds and you know kind of uh, runs that are based on the whole tone scale and just it, it just sounded so odd but intoxicating and utterly unlike anything i'd ever heard it's probably the one piece of guitar playing that got me into um thinking about jazz and kind of exotic harmonies and you know things like that and oh there we go we're out of time friends by joe satriani yeah, I discovered Joe Satriani via one of those uh, little flexi disc records that uh, comes that used to come with uh, Guitar Player magazine. I think it was the song "The Crush of Love." Pretty soon after that, I got um, you know "Surfing with the Alien" on vinyl, and it was a great album. Still stands the test of time to this day. Then the follow up album, "Flying in a Blue Dream," it suffered from that thing that many. Um, albums of that era the 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 dawn of the cd age where the cd was the primary um you know kind of medium for the releasing of the albums you know it, there was too much stuff on it it would have been twice as good an album if it was half as long and then out comes the extremist that album and the first track on it friends what an absolute tour de force he sold a few records by now as joe and he's got a bit of a bigger budget and the production really shows on this on this track just fa fantastic, sublime guitar playing, and I can't um, really tell you any more than that because I'm running out of time. Scuttle Button by Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yes, indeed. Um, Stevie Ray Vaughan, one of those guitarists that we heard a lot about in the UK in the 80s uh, via the guitar mags, but his records weren't that easy to find. You couldn't go and buy a, a copy of Texas Flood or couldn't stand the weather in um, your local branch of Woolworths, for example, or, you know, Boots the Chemist used to sell records in those days, and they didn't stock it. Um, so when you found a copy of an album uh, by one of these artists that everybody was talking about, I did a video about this ages ago, you know, kind of albums I took a chance on. Uh, Texas Flood was one of them, and I quite liked it. But then you get the follow-up album, Couldn't Stand the Weather, and the opening track on that album, it just it, it blows you away. If I still had hair on my head when I listen to it now, it would make it kind of go backwards. It's an utter tour de force of fantastic, virtuoso blues guitar playing with just soul and grit and everything that you want in such music. There's the timer. Telegraph Road. By Mark Knopfler. Yeah, the eighties for many people was all about the um, the kind of spandex-clad neoclassical shredder kind of twiddly widdly guitar players. I never really got into that. I was I think it's to do with the the whole Hank Marvin origins of my uh, musical guitar tastes. I've always been more interested in m melody, and um, you know Mark Knopfler virtuoso in his own way i know some people will tend to dispute that um but for me love over gold is the the, the pinnacle of uh dire straits studio albums um it's where they kind of um, just they just got everything uh you know all the ducks in a row and just the wind in the right direction fantastic and that opening track telegraph road it's a cinematic epic of a song and you know it just it's it's fantastic there's a big long guitar solo on the end but the one that always gets me is is that solo in the middle i've done a, done a video about it go and check it out and there's the timer comfortably numb by David Gilmore. Yeah, uh, here's a pub trivia question for you. What was the last Christmas um, number one single in the UK of the 1970s? People always think it's Boney M or Slade or something like that. It was actually Another Brick in the Wall by Pink Floyd. And because it was a big hit single, I went out and bought the album. And, you know, I mean, comfortably numb. The, the, it would be difficult to pick out one standout track off that album but or one standout solo but for me that middle solo on Comfortably Numb is probably only eclipsed in you know on in David Gilmore's canon of work by the end solo utterly sublime fantastic playing just the epitome of playing to the song soulful melodic tuneful just full of of emotion and just beautifully beautifully put together solo and i think i'm actually going to make it in under the wire this time three two one sunset 
by Gary Moore. Yeah, no, to be honest with you, I could have filled up this entire list with Gary Moore guitar solos. Um, but if I had to pick one, again, this file this under, it could be different whichever day you ask me. But uh, there's a tune called Sunset that he did on a Cozy Powell album called Tilt. And I believe it's dedicated to Randy Rhodes. And it's just Gary at his at his best you know when he kind of has that kind of ferocity and melo- melodic quality at the same time fused together in just the way that only he could do utterly utterly beautiful playing um if you if you'd never heard gary moore play before then and you wanted to know which track to to kind of say sums him up the best then you know, still got the blues, Parisian walkers, all that sort of stuff. Just go and listen to Sunset, uh, an instrumental track with a, a fantastic improvised solo in it from the Cozy Powell album Tilt. You will not regret it. There's the timer. Key to the Highway by Eric Clapton. So we arrive at the number one slot. Um, it belongs to Mr. Clapton. Um, you know, the um, the solo that he played on that impromptu jam uh, a key to the highway from the Layla and other assorted love songs album. Just the the the, the interplay between Eric and Dwayne Alman. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You know, people going about the Beano album as being you know Eric Clapton's finest. Hour. I don't. Eric Eric playing on that is good, but it's still a work in progress. When you get to, however, Layla and other assorted love songs, I think that I don't think Eric has ever played better than he did on that album. Uh, This is a song that lasts about seven or eight minutes. It's just a slow eight bar blues, not a 12 bar blues. And it's, I'm just going to turn the timer off now because I'm going to go over time here. Um, it, it's an eight bar blues the the it just eight minutes or thereabouts of him and Dwayne Allman trading solos and apparently it was just an impromptu jam that was uh, that happened to be captured it fades in you know how many songs do that because obviously they just um once the band were in the groove and everything the the the, the faders just kind of uh, get turned up and that's the uh, that's the, the the song that you hear solo after solo after solo of brilliance from Eric and Dwayne on that it's uh, we could call a tie for first place between Eric and Dwayne on that particular track some fantastic solos and there you go folks those are my all time favourite guitar solos of all time let me know if you if you disagree with any this is a subjective topic you know raspberry jam versus strawberry jam you know we're all going to have our own opinions let me know what yours are in the comment section down below i'll be genuinely interested to hear and that is pretty much the video for today folks hope you've enjoyed what you've seen hope i've been reasonably entertaining for the past 10 minutes or so and if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not give me a like while you're at it Don't forget, as always, the live stream every Friday, 5pm UK time, where we drink beer and talk about music and guitars, and possibly this week, uh, our top 10 guitar solos. Um, It's a great way to kick off the weekend. I would love to see you there if you can make it. But for now, I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe, and above all, stay sane. Bye for now. (laughs) 